Finally, we've arrived at the monster of question number 6 for the AP Statistics free response. Question number 6 is supposed to be the longest, time, most time consuming, and the one that you have to think through the most before you arrive at the answer. Let's see how 2017 question number 6 went down. Consider an experiment. Experiment is always exciting. In which two men and two women will be randomly assigned to either a treatment or control group. In such a way, each group has two people. The people are identified as man 1, man 2, woman 1, and woman 2. And the six possible arrangements they nicely have given to us below. Two possible methods of assignments are considered. You have a coin flip method and the chip method. And coin flip method is going to be part A. Chip method is going to be part B. And we are going to have part C, which I will not show you yet, as described in part B. For each method, the order of assignment will be man 1, man 2, woman 1, woman 2. This, this thing is, this small thing is very, very important. The order of assignment is going to be man 1 goes first. He's going to be put into some group. Then man 2 is going to be put into some group. And the woman 1, then woman 2. <clears throat> For the sequential coin flip method, so how do we do this? A fair coin is flipped until one group has two people. Because once we have two people in one group, the other two is going to other two people is going to go into the other group. An outcome of tail is assigned a person to the treatment. So one side is treatment and the other side is control. So, okay. That, that makes sense. So if man 1 comes in, flips the coin, and he gets treatment, he goes into treatment. And man 2 flips the coin, and he gets treatment, he goes into treatment, and we are done. Because we have two people in one group, we know the other two is going to go on to the control. If the man 1 gets treatment, he goes in. If man 2 gets control, he goes in. Since we do not know two people in a group, we are going to continue. Woman 1 is going to flip the coin, and if she gets treatment, we know woman 2 is going to be control. If she gets control, we know woman 2 is going to be treatment, and so on. So that's what's going down. I complete the table below by calculating the probability of each assignment occurring if a sequential coin flip method is used. Okay, let's look at arrangement A. Man 1. What's the chance of getting into treatment? Well, that's one half. For man 2, the chance of getting into treatment? That's one half. So you get one fourth. For A, that's easy enough. Now let's look at B. Man 1, what's the probability of getting into treatment? That's one half. Man 2, getting into control? That's one half. But we're not done because we do not have two people in a group yet. Woman 1, what's the probability of getting into treatment? That's one half. So multiplying it out, you have one eighth. And now if we look at arrangement C, you see it is symmetric. You see it is symmetric to arrangement B. The same thing is happening. Man 1 going into one group, man 2 going into the other, and woman 1 having to decide which one. So C is also going to be 1 8. Uh, assignment D. Now you see man 1 and man 2 are going into the same one. This thing is the same case as assignment A. So it's going to be 1 4th. Arrangement E, man 1 going into something, man 2 going in, into something else, and woman 1 having to decide which one, that's 1 eighth. And same for assignment F, that's 1 eighth. You can check it, 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth is 1. Because you got 1 half here, and you got 4 1 eighths, so you got 1 half and 1 half, so that gets you 1, which, which should happen. So that's, that's part of I. How about part II? For the sequential coin flip, what's the probability that man 1 and man 2 are in the same group? That's either assignment A or assignment D. So that's 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. So probability for A, probability for D. Add them up, you get 1 half. Now let's look at part B. Uh, same thing is happening, but now the chip method is used. For the chip method, two chips are marked treatment. So you got two T's. And two chips are marked control. So you got 2C. Each person selects one chip without replacement. So what's going on? So man 1 comes in. Remember, man 1 is the first one that comes in. And he's going to pick one of the coins. Let's say he picked treatment. So man 1 is now in treatment. So man 1 is now into treatment group. 
Now man 2 is going to come in and he's gonna pick one of the coins. Now realize it is more likely for man 2 to pick the control given that the man 1 has picked the treatment. He's gonna pick one of them. He's gonna go in. Woman 1 is gonna come in, pick one of them. And woman 2 is going to be automatically put into the last one. So that's what's happening with the chip method. And we are finding the probability once again. Let's look at A. Man 1 has to go into treatment, which means you have 2 out of 4 things to choose. So that's 1 half for man 1. And man 2 has to go into treatment again. But now out of 3 things, because 1 is gone, you have to pick 1 treatment. So 1 half times 1 third gets you 1 6. And D, since that's the symmetric case with A, that's also going to be 1 6. How about for B? Well, a very important thing to realize. You can realize assignment B, C, E, and F are symmetric. Their probabilities are going to be the same because all of them are dealing with man 1 going into something, man 2 going into the opposite, and woman 1 having to decide which one to choose. So since we got 2 6 already going on, we have 4 6 left to fill out, and since we got 4 boxes with equal probabilities, each of them is going to be 1 6. Or you can actually calculate it for B. Uh, man 1 has 2 out of 4 things to choose to get into the treatment. Man 2 has 2 out of 3 things left to choose to get into control. And woman 1 has 1 out of 2 things to choose to get into treatment. And if you calculate this, that's 1 half, you get 1 6. So either way, you get the same answer. And for the chip method, probability that they are in the same group, that's A or D. So 1 6 plus 1 6 gets you 1 third. Very close to being done. C. 16 participants consisting of 10 students and 6 teachers at an elementary school will be used for an experiment to determine lunch preference for the school population of students and teachers. As the participants enter the school cafeteria for lunch, they will be randomly assigned to receive one of two lunches. Realize how this is parallel to the assignment above, to the, to the, not assignment, to the experiment conducted in parts A and B. Uh, so that 8 will receive a salad, so the same 8 will receive a cheese sandwich, so the same number is going into its category. Those students will enter the cafeteria first, realize how this thing is also symmetric with what just happened, what, what happened to men and women, because men entered the experiment first, then women entered, and in this case students are going before teachers. Okay, so which method should be used to assign the treatment? Well, we want chip. The reason being, chip method is fair. It, the probability distribution for chip method is uniform. So it is not biased, not biased toward certain, certain combination or arrangement, actually. Arrangement. And we do not necessarily want a um, uh, unreasonably high or relatively high probability of all the students eating the same lunch. So the chip method f uh, or all the teachers eating the same lunch. So we want the probability to be relatively uniform and about the same for each combination to not be biased. 